Hello everybody, welcome or welcome back to BNB Anime. I am Blue, that is Brad. Today we are going to be covering Laid Back Camp Season 2. But before we get into that, how are you doing? I'm good. I've been on vacation all week, so it's been a blast. I got to take part in a Minecraft trial yesterday over mm-hmm. a gorilla. That was that was fun. Yeah. So what had happened was was a friend of mine, Bonk, her and her boyfriend have a Minecraft server. Mm-hmm. And it is modded, so of course there's a whole lot of new shit. I'm currently in the midst of trying to build my mountaintop fortress of cherry blossoms. However, that's besides the point. Mm-hmm. And so what had happened was apparently there is a bug in this particular mod pack to where if you put a gorilla on a leash, I don't understand why. <laughs> this is the one thing that does it. But if you put a gorilla on a lead, it will cause the server to crash. And this went on for like a solid month. Like it was, or not a month, but a solid week. Like it was bad. Okay. And so after they figured out what it was, like Nick was troubleshooting for like a solid week. He finally figured it out. And so we decided because of that, that we would put the gorilla on trial. Oh, okay. It was, and it was to determine whether the gorilla needed to go in the zoo or if, or if he would be put to his death we had a huge lava pit built outside of the courthouse for you know what whatever should arise out of everything so the gorilla was found not guilty for his crimes he is um at present being forced to work the strip club to pay for his you know court fees and then from there he may be inevitably put in the zoo if we ever get a zoo built or who who knows what his fate will be maybe he'll be a hit at the strip club who knows so he's he's on stage uh he's in the back he hasn't been moved to the stage yet we have yet to try to like put a cage around the stage so he doesn't try to get away okay but he will be a performing gorilla Uh, i don't know at this point we we haven't gotten that far it immediately turned into after that like everybody kind of said their goodbyes like half the people left and then the other half of us just kind of went about doing our own thing Mm. and so i just got permission today to get creative mode to where i can like start building all of my fun contraption and shenanigans you know i'm honestly surprised that there wasn't a big battle surrounding this situation considering guerrilla warfare (laughs) 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 that was that was a real sneaky one that you just snuck in there (laughs) thank you i appreciate that (laughs) 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 what can i say i'm just monkeying around (laughs) <laughs> so uh, apparently there's probably going to be another trial going on soon because another person decided to uh they were kind of lagging out their section of the map because they had like a hundred cats outside their house it's always the cats yeah and so there may be another trial here soon because they got rid of the cats oh yeah, so <laughs> apparently there's going to be another trial coming soon. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> but I've I've enjoyed it. It's been nice getting back into Minecraft and kind of enjoying the shenanigans that are going on around it. Yeah. But that's that's pretty much been the highlight of my week has been dicking around on that and playing Siege. We finally finished the battle pass like two days before it was done. Nice. <sighs> that was stress. But yeah, that's that's pretty much been it. How about you? How's your week been? Oh. Um, just kind of getting getting my bearings, you know, um, exploring my area around where I am. I've been like, you know how you do that thing where you start like staying close to where you move to and you don't really branch out very much. And then you get like a block further and then a block further and a block further until eventually you kind of are able to, to go places. Mm-hmm. I went on an hour's trek today. Um, on the on the transit so it probably wasn't actually that far but because of city traffic it took an hour to get mm-hmm. where I was going um, and I found a new witchcraft shop that was uh, actually really quite fun and a very strange coincidence happened so call it fate witchcraft whatever you want to call it but it <laughs> it was a thing I went well which is it <laughs> I don't know which <laughs> uh, um, yeah, I went and bought a phone charger the other day because mine broke. You know when you have like the internal wires or whatever of your phone charger right near the base snap? Mm-hmm. If you've yep. had it for a really long time and you don't treat it nicely, um, that happened to mine and it and it broke. And mm-hmm. so I had to kind of 
rush out and grab a phone charger because I didn't have a backup. And uh, obviously my phone is my lifeline out here. So I ran to just a local drugstore to just grab a, a, a phone charger. And there was just a really nice girl on the till who helped me because all the, the chargers were behind the, the till. Mm-hmm. And she helped me. And she was wearing a bunch of crystals around her neck. And I commented on them. She said, oh, those are nice. Like, I really like those. And we had a bit of a conversation because she was saying that she had lost the one that she was wearing, that she used to wear all the time. And then she lost it. And then so she just chucked on all of the rest of the other ones that she had. Because she was <laughs> oh, like, oh, yes. I let, me, let me lose one and try to make up for that by wearing all. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, uh, so she was wearing this bundle of crystals around her neck. Um, and of course I commented on it. So it's quite unusual to see someone with like at least four crystals. And, uh, and so I commented on it. And then when I went to the witch shop today, she was working there and I didn't really recognize her at first. I was like, Oh, you seem kind of familiar, but this is an hour away, right? It's not close. Mm -hmm. Um, And we were talking and I was saying, would you like working here? And she was saying, yeah, I really, really like working here. I only really work here one day a week because it would be my preference to work here all the time, but there's not enough hours. So I choose to work an extra day here just because I really like the place. Mm-hmm. And and then she was saying that she worked in a drugstore the rest of the time. And I and then I kind of put two and two together and saw the crystals around her neck. And I was like, did you sell me a phone charger only recently? And she goes, I'm not sure. And I went, I commented on your crystals. And she went, yes, actually I did. So that was... I don't know. We're friends now. That's great. I made a new friend. <laughs> Look at that. Look at you. I am so proud that you've actually went out and made a friend. Right? Yeah. Um, but I got got a bunch of dried herbs, a couple candles, you know, the, the regular stuff. I had a good look around. Mm-hmm. And it's a really, really nice, small, little local run shop. So I'm definitely going to be popping out there again whenever I feel like venturing further into the city. Look at you go. I'm so proud. Yeah. That was my adventure of the day. It's so hot here, though. I. Uh, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> you so... don't know what heat I know. is. I know. Which I realize heat for you is different for heat for us, but still, I don't want to hear it. I have been busting my ass outside this week playing tennis every single day. I don't want to hear it. Yeah, what is it for you right now? Because we've had a heat warning for the past couple of weeks, and it's been pretty consistently 30 degrees every day. 33 and a half. Okay, so slightly warmer. <laughs> slightly i'll give it to you though because that's like what five degrees fahrenheit six degrees fahrenheit and that's a fair amount but i will also say that just because it is that temperature we have a magical thing called the heat index and if you take into account the heat index then what it actually what it feels like outside is a whopping 38 and a half 38 and a half that's insane yeah that's what it feels like it's not actually that hot but humidity is a fucking bitch our humidity is at 79 percent right now that's humid yeah it's gonna storm tonight though see we've got a hurricane coming into louisiana right now and so that's gonna send a shit ton of rain our way Mm. yeah it's gonna storm for the next like three days apparently yeehaw yeah i quite like storms I do too. I enjoy the weather. I mean, as much as it makes me fear for my computer, even though it's plugged into surge protectors, it still makes me fear for their lives. No, 100%. I always feel like I have to shut everything off and completely, like, get it all down for, like, anything. Yeah. I say that, yet I'm also the kind of person that will take a shower in the midst of a lightning storm just because, fuck it, if I die, I die. (laughs) Just for funsies. Hey, look, weather's not going to, like hurt my scheduling of what i'm supposed to take a shower okay mm-hmm. there could be a tornado and i could be like all right gotta get clean if i'm <laughs> if i'm gonna die i'm gonna die i guess i feel like bathrooms are actually a pretty solid place to be during a tornado i don't know they they're quite structurally sound with all the piping and stuff mm-hmm. i mean kind of but again if your bathroom is on the like outside wall it's mm-hmm. also not the greatest place to be yeah you don't want to be near any glass and i suppose showers have quite a bit of glass just just a little bit, you know, considering the sliding shower doors are glass, there's a window, mm. could, could get impaled just a little bit. Just a little bit. Under just the stairs, folks. Get under the stairs if you have them. What's that? Don't. I don't know what stairs are. I don't actually have any stairs here. I don't think that I will get a tornado out here, though. Back in Alberta, that was, that was always the thing. The local middle school had a tornado um, siren on it, because mm-hmm. you get quite a bit out in the prairies you tend to get a fair amount 
Yeah, yeah um, they like flatland. They're mm-hmm. not they're not a big fan of like mountainous areas. And with us being in a valley, like we're safe sometimes. Yeah. But then we have like really bad ones, like once every decade that like destroys the community. Yeah, we there was a well where I lived back in Alberta, there was a big lake. So mm-hmm. most of the time when there was a tornado in the area, it was on the lake. Mm-hmm. And it didn't really ever come on land. A couple of times you would hear about a barn getting picked up, you know, every now and again. But like I said, I lived in the middle of the country. There was a lot that a tornado could hit that wasn't civilized, you know? Yeah. So it would have been very unlucky. I completely lost my train of thought. Me too. I was like, attack the corn tornado, send food to everyone. Corn. Yeah, there was a, a corn. I'm going to, that was, that was a fun thing that I did in high school. There was a local corn maze. Mm-hmm. And they used to like Halloween it up. Make it all jumpy Ooh, and, and scary and stuff during during Halloween. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I used to do that in high school. I've got some old photos of me and the me and the twins actually, the twins and a couple of of friends that we had as well. Hey, looky there! Yeah, I've, I've never got them. to do a haunted maze. You didn't get to do one. You haven't. Nah, we have some around here. I've just never been. Again, I'm not very much a like socially person. Yeah. So, like, if my friend group now wanted to go, I'd be like, sure, fuck it, why not? But yeah. Especially back in high school, I was so much more introverted. Like, the only hanging out I wanted to do with people was online playing video games. That was it. Yeah. Yeah. See, I was, I don't know. I've always been, I, I'm like an extroverted introvert. Like, I mm-hmm. don't, because I think the definition of an introvert is if you get tired while being around other people. And an extrovert is if you get energy by being around other people, right? Mm-hmm. So, I'm an introvert because I find people exhausting. <laughs> but uh, Yep. I don't like any kind of silence or lull in a conversation or, you know, I think that's when maybe my ADHD kind of comes in. I have to be fairly active and and including people always having something to talk about, that kind of thing. So I, mm-hmm. when I'm with people, I feel like I'm quite bubbly, but then I come home and I crash and I don't want to talk to anybody. <laughs> I think I just kind of match the situation I'm in. Like if I'm in a like cool, chill environment, that's fine. But if I have to turn myself up to 10 to kind of fit in with that crowd, then I'm going to. Yeah. I'm not the kind of person who like changes who I am around people anymore just to fit in. Like that's not me. No. But I just like turn myself up or down depending on like what kind of level I need to kind of match the mood. But of course, the higher the level I have to go to, the more exhausted I'm going to be by the time it's all said and done. Yeah, I feel like that's fairly normal to have like an energy match. You just don't want to then be around people that drain you all the time. Mm-hmm. Like, I remember talking about it on the podcast whenever I went to Florida last mm-hmm. October. Mm-hmm. That drained me. Those people sapped every last bit of social energy I had for that weekend. That was not fun. Ugh. So, but again, that's just kind of the, you got to kind of match whoever you're around to kind of not cause any issues especially considering it's like a bachelor bachelorette weekend for everybody so i didn't want to be the doler of the group Mm -hmm. although i was the only person that couldn't drink so i I was definitely party mom yeah yeah which is a very draining situation to be in yeah you know (laughs) yeah yeah it's one of the reasons why i think the twins and i get on so well and have done for it'll be eight years in september is just that like we can go out and be really loud and rambunctious and kind of annoying I'm sure to everybody around us but then we can also just like I mean our entire high school years pretty much were spent in my basement playing Minecraft not talking to each other because we were talking in game you know like Mm -hmm. we can spend days in the same room with barely a conversation with each other when we just need to you know calm down and have a bit of time and then go balls to the wall crazy as well mm-hmm. in the in you know as soon as one of us perks up you know yeah and it's one of those things to where i uh, had this conversation with somebody not too awful long ago i think it was like a date or some shit i don't fucking know anyway but we were talking about like social energies and everything and they were like kind of like what's kind of your like what's your ideal way of spending time with someone and i'm like ultimately it doesn't matter like for me like time is obviously the most valuable asset that i have i don't give a shit about money because i can always make more but time i can't get back so i don't give a shit if i'm sitting at home in the same room with someone like scrolling through tiktok or going out and about 
like it's irrelevant as long as it's quality time. Mm -hmm. So I, again, it's all just, I guess like an energy matching thing again, but again, it's all just quality over quantity. Yeah. If that, I feel like I got off track a little bit, but it, in my head, it made sense at the time. (laughs) (laughs) Do you, have you ever had those moments where you're like having a conversation with someone and they say just like a few words, one line, and it just drains everything in you. Yes, one hundred percent. Yeah, it's like I don't, I don't want anything to do with you anymore. Sorry, like I mm-hmm. just, I want to go home now. Oh yeah, like one hundred percent. Like, and it's weird, like how if the tension in the room could be felt, it would be like the whole air just turned into a solid block. Yeah. Like, all the air has just been sucked out of the whole conversation oh, at yeah. that point. Mm-hmm. Like, it's blatantly obvious whenever stuff like that happens. Yeah. It's I've been on the receiving end, and I've also, like, done that to people, mm-hmm. too. Yeah. I think everyone sticks their foot in their mouths every now and again. It's happened to me quite a few times recently through, like, Messenger and, and texting people. Mm-hmm. And I don't really know how to respond to that. Because, obviously, if you're in person, you can feel it and most people would be able to detect the situational change like the environmental change right Mm -hmm. so i feel like you'll find that most people will try and backtrack after that Mm -hmm. but during text like how do you respond to something that just like falls flat and you just you're done you see for me and i'll i don't know if it's the adhd brain that kicks in after that Mm mm-hmm But then, like, I will immediately go distract myself with something else. Yeah. Like, I will just immediately just stop the conversation, might not even respond Mm -hmm. for that matter, and then just go on living my life because I don't want to, I don't want to deal with it. Yeah. Yeah. I've definitely ghosted a few people (laughs) because I I feel bad about it because obviously I, I, like, I'm sure they didn't intend anything negative, Mm -hmm. but I don't know, because I don't want to be that person that's just like, don't say that. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And then I get awkward, and then I don't know what to do. So I think it just kind of depends on the person and the relationship that you have with that individual as well. Like, if you understand them well enough to know that whatever they said isn't necessarily what they meant, it just came out improperly, then I guess that would mm-hmm. kind of, like, at least not make it as bad. Mm-hmm. But again, if you're talk if you are having a messaging conversation with someone, especially if you are like myself and you proofread everything and think about everything kind of over and over before you send it, because it works both ways. Like you like if you if you were to get that message and you have to interpret it, like how would you kind of feel about it? And so I guess that's just kind of the way that I am. Like I have to think through things mm-hmm. and understand the person that I'm sending it to to make sure that they wouldn't, you know, feel apprehensive about what I'm sending as well or could potentially take it wrong. Yeah. Whereas in person, it's kind of hard for stuff like that to happen because if, again, you're like me, fuck off, motorcycle brigade. I am having a conversation. (laughs) Jesus Christ. But anyway, if you're like me and you just spit whatever bullshit comes out of your mouth then I can understand stuff like that happening. Although, again, my anxiety kind of forces me to think things through a little bit before I say it. It's still just blah. Yeah. Just out into the world, especially when I stream. Mm -hmm. Streaming is real bad for me to not think about what I say before I say it. Oh, yeah. No, I get that. When I was streaming, it would just... I mean, occasionally when I was streaming, a topic of conversation would be brought up that I would find myself being very careful with the Mm -hmm. way that I spoke. And uh, and then I would definitely think think things through. But if it was just mm-hmm. casual, chill, whatever, off the cuff conversation, yeah, I didn't I didn't tend to to really think about it very mm-hmm. much. Plus, it's another one of those things too, especially in a streaming environment. Like we are very much like personas of ourselves. Yeah. Like I very much stream with like the persona of I'm a god. Like that's kind of. <laughs> my stick i don't understand why it has to be me turned up to 10 and like me being invincible but that's just kind of the way i choose to carry it and the topic of conversation could very well kind of dictate how that's going to be especially back whenever we were streaming like during the election time oh my god that was that was draining Mm -hmm. like that was stupid how much shit we had to deal with then Mm mm-hmm 
just because that's what everybody that came in a chat would want to talk about. And I'm just like, look, like we don't do that here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my brother, he, he streams, he um, has quite a few times banned things like, well, he's banned politics completely across the board from his channel. Mm -hmm. And quite a few other, other things that are like that. He's just flat out banned so that he can keep it a lighter, more chill atmosphere. So the same way it's like, don't spam, spam caps. Don't, you know, repeat a message a million times. It's also don't bring up politics. Mm -hmm. Funnily enough, though, I bumped into a running local a person, I don't know, today. I don't really know much about the new the politics in the area that I'm in now. I have to brush up on this. But I bumped into one on the corner of the road, the corner of the, the street. It was just by himself with a placard telling everyone to vote for him. And it was very strange because you absolutely do not get that out in the country so well obviously i mean what are they can do stand on a field sign like yeah well i mean you had a u.s president who got elected from running off of his front porch yeah. so hey anything is possible anything is possible but yeah elections are coming up here so i think we might have like some like a local election coming up soon i don't yeah. i don't fucking know i'm too engrossed in everything going on there's so much anime and video games going on right now oh my god did you watch the trailer i sent you for that pokemon s game the other day oh yeah does that not look insane yeah oh my god i'm so excited mm -hmm. yeah oh, there's so many good games that have like come out of gamescom this year there was that one we saw an extended trailer for the new Yakuza game that looks incredible. Yeah. Video game graphics have evolved tremendously in our lifetime. Yeah, actually, I was just kind of brushing up on that recently. I've been looking at different characters from when they were originally produced to now. Mm -hmm. Specifically people like Princess Peach, um, that kind of thing, like, like mm -hmm. female protagonist type characters and and i was looking at them and looking at, at their structures and their their face shapes and and outfits and all that kind of stuff and it just is because even like um for, for instance princess peach she started off with like i don't know four pixels basically and mm -hmm. <laughs> and then quickly progressed until kind of the image that we know her very first image looks pretty much nothing like she does now mm -hmm. but then you start seeing them release games that are like the retro version. So then mm -hmm. you go back to the pixelated versions, but you compare those two pixel versions of the original, even the second one, to the more modern interpretation. Mm -hmm. And it's so shockingly different, even though they're both pixelated, because the modern pixelated one is actually so many more pixels, but mm -hmm. made to look like it's only, what, like a 32 by 32 square or something yeah Which then you've got better. laura croft from tomb raider how With far she's boobs. yep to now they've gone back to the more like kind of like early 20s age but super in depth with the new tomb raider games yeah zelda from the original nes to present day breath of the wild yeah. on the switch like so much shit has changed and speaking of games yes I don't know if you got ostracized for this, but I got ostracized for our episode last week. Oh? We talked about a game, about game development, but neglected to talk about something that you've got going on in your life that was the whole reason as to why I picked that topic, and I got ostracized for it. <laughs> yeah, no, it's funnily enough, as soon as we hit end record, I thought, oh, darn, we, uh, we didn't bring that up at all. Yep, um, I even had the same thought too, yeah. and so uh, our mutual friend was yelling at me, or not yelling, but it was in all caps, she's like, Brad, you didn't talk about the game we're working on, Brad, that was the whole point as to why you chose this topic, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, uh, I, I, he, he had asked me as well if, um, if I brought it up, and, and yeah, no, I just completely slipped my mind, but yes, what Brad is talking about is that I um working with our mutual friend um and colleague i suppose who towards building our very own game <laughs> so he is doing the more programming technical side of things um and i've been working on some graphics um we're getting into more graphics soon and voice acting 
storyline, game design, characters, all of that side of things. And uh, yeah, it's it's kind of a thing that you're probably going to be hearing about more here on the podcast as it starts coming out because it will like we'll be progressing through stages in the next couple of months here you'll start hearing more and more about it but yeah initial early stages I have a big thing coming it is going to be pretty exciting I feel like so keep your eyes and ears open for it and I'll give you more details as it comes you Again, you being you and you're being way too humble about this whole situation. Like what y'all are doing is absolutely incredible. I have followed this shit through our mutual friend since its earliest conception of the idea and like how far the game has progressed. Holy shit. Like yeah. this is going to be awesome. Like don't there's no need to be humble about all of this mess. Like it's going to be awesome. I like just how far it's come. It's so good. Like so much work and thought process is going into this. And I cannot be more excited for just to see how everything is going to kind of progress in the next couple of months, considering I know kind of the end goal at this point, Mm -hmm. but I'm super fucking excited. Like this is excellent. Like, uh, yeah, good on y'all. Like, this is awesome. Like I'm so excited. So absolutely excited. Well, it's. I feel like if you guys are interested and have enjoyed games like Stardew Valley or Undertale, it's kind of like that in ways, and also very witchcrafty, folk, fairy, Celtic kind of workings. Because obviously, the the person who I'm making the game with is Welsh. And so we're including Welsh law, English law, we're actually getting some Irish and Scottish as well in, so it's very much the British Isles as well. I don't know, maybe we'll get into some like Guernsey or Isle of Man law, I don't know. We, I'm exploring into all of that kind of stuff. And and yeah, we're, we're uh, like, that's, I don't know, it's very exciting. I am doing a lot of research on different law, on different witchcraft, on different herbs on all this kind of stuff to try and make it as like magically factual as possible if that makes mm-hmm. any sense like yeah. yeah it's like um the science of herbs which is a real science because it's chemicals combined with the history of of british and and british isles folklore i guess yeah don't mind the opening of the can i was not trying to go for a dramatic like back at the church like just <laughs> nothing like that what are you drinking <laughs> mountain dew zero ah. or unnamed beverage since they don't want to sponsor us mm. how dare they you are such a gamer though i mean i love my mountain dew zero because it is delicious tastes just like mountain dew but zero calories zero sugar and more caffeine mm. And at this point, we all know I live off of caffeine. Yes. Caffeine is like my source of life. I would have gotten an iced coffee before I got on here, but I'm not going to lie. I would have had a drink by now. (laughs) So instead, I've got two 64-ounce jugs of water and then my caffeine sitting in front of me. So I'm good. Yeah. I ran out of milk, so I need to go get some for cappuccinos. Well, 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 look at you. You need to you need to just go down to the shop. I am very fortunate. I, I have quite a few quite near that are just like local run mum and pop shops that I can just pop out and grab a few groceries, you know? I'm sure that's just a complete culture shock to you compared to what you're used to. Yeah. yeah it... I realize you've lived on your own before mm-hmm. and whatnot, but still, that was quite a ways back. So I know this is kind of a whole new experience all over again. Yeah, type I was scenario. a teenager. I was freshly 18 when i moved out the first time and yeah that was only like five years ago it's not that bad yeah but i i feel like i don't know five years when you're early 20s is a very long time you know five years Mm -hmm. when you're 50 is nothing yeah Um, but uh yeah i don't know i had i had a shop quite close when i lived in calgary that was again a local little convenience store but of course where i was at there the prices were quite expensive because it was kind of the only small convenience type shop for a little bit of a ways there were like a starbucks and a secondhand bookshop and like other things there 
um, quite a few bars. I lived I lived near the the clubbing bar kind of area. Mm-hmm. But then it was like a quite a long walk, like six blocks maybe not like a huge long walk but when you have a load of groceries a long walk to the big grocery store and just, then just steal the cart mate just steal the cart <laughs> just steal it. it'll be okay we um, here at the b and b anime podcast do not condone stealing no of thievery. <laughs> but here i've got quite a few little shops around so i can i found that if they don't do the bits that i want in one then one of the other shops will have them and -hmm. because there's so many of them the prices are kind of the same as a regular grocery store maybe a little bit more expensive but Mm -hmm. like relatively the same i know for us if you hear convenience store you hear stupid outrageous pricing on shit especially milk Mm -hmm. my god milk is expensive at a convenience store Mm mm-hmm so interesting enough that for y'all convenience stores are actually close to the same price. I think it's just because there's so many. I feel like if I was like maybe further on the edge of the city or in a like a richer area, maybe they mm-hmm. the prices would increase. But out here, and I feel like maybe it's one of those things where it's like the dates on the milk aren't as good. Like you, maybe they are only red like good for a couple of like four or five days or whatever, as opposed to like a two week period like you get with some. But I go through milk pretty quickly because I have it in like every cup of coffee that I drink. I mean, I don't have cereal and just glasses of milk, but I have like four cappuccinos a day. So <laughs> so this is what you're doing out there where you're living now. I see what, I, I yeah. see your game. Yeah. it's like I don't have a single drop of alcohol in my apartment. I do have two just coffee. cans of coffee. <laughs> I need to I need to include some coffee in your care package. I, I love I've been experimenting with different brands of espresso. We have gone so off track. We're recording for an hour, but that's fine. Um No, we've only been going for thirty six minutes. Okay. We're fine. 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 Sure. You act like it's gonna take us that long to talk about a cozy little camping anime. That's true. That's true. Uh but I've I've been exploring different brands of espresso because I have an espresso machine in my apartment. I don't have like a coffee machine, which I prefer because I tend to like more specialty coffees because I'm fancy as opposed to just you know, Oh my god, you're so posh. I, what happened to you? I know, right. So posh. Um as opposed to just your bog standard cup of coffee. Mm-hmm. That being said, when I lived at home, I used to have, just have bog standard cups of coffee all the time because we had a Keurig. So I would just use the um, biodegradable pods, chuck them in, and bam, bam, thank you, ma'am. Nice cup of coffee, you know? Please tell me you invested in like one of those coffee shop standard like coffee makers to where you can make your cappuccinos. Oh, yeah. Well, it's not huge. It's like a smaller one, but it does have a milk steamer and is like a, you know. Does it have the little thing where you gotta like twist it on with the coffee grounds in it? Yes, it does. Oh my god. And it has the option to have either two shots or one shot of espresso. I've never used the one shot, so. (laughs) Oh my god, you... Who are you? I I don't know who I'm speaking to anymore. It was only like you leave me for three weeks, and this is what you become. It was it was cheap. It wasn't for a coffee machine. I think it was only like fifty five Canadian. Like it wasn't anywhere. Like it was the same level of price as just a, a well. It was less expensive than a Keurig. Uh huh. Sure. Sure. So, posh. Well. Posh individual. I am posh, but I still have just my regular old teapot, so that works fine. <laughs> Oh, that's the thing I had to find to give you shit about this episode. It's my fancy coffee machine. I uh, use it so much, though. It's so, so, so worth the money. That's awesome. Like, I've seriously considered getting, like, one of those, like, four or $500 ones. So that way yeah. I can just have my coffee here at the house. Although, my grandmother would chew me up one side and down the other. <laughs> just because I, I can't cook anything here no. without getting ostracized. However, if I moved out... She wouldn't have anybody. So, oh. you know, but <clears throat> yeah, it's it's one of those things. However, I did find something out this week. Oh. Smoked burgers are the best burgers. I don't think I've ever had a smoked burger. I was just in the mood because I got a new smoker <clears throat> a few weeks ago. I think I talked about it on here. If I didn't, yeah. whoops. Anyway, so I was just in the mood. So I threw some hamburger meat in the fridge, let it thaw, called Walker, and I was like, hey, I'm a throw some burgers on the smoker just to try it out he's like cool i'm on my way so i tried them and best burger i've ever had nice i've never had a burger that i've made well done just be like that 
juicy. Like it was the most odd experience I've ever had, but it was fantastic. It was so good. What do you have in your burger? What is the perfect burger for you? Fuck off, motorcycle brigade. That's what I like to have in my burger. <laughs> <laughs> but um, for me, toasted bun, mm-hmm. given. And as far as toppings go, I'm not that picky. Me personally, my favorite burger of all time is a farmhouse burger. So hash browns, over easy egg, bacon, mm. pepper jack cheese. Like that is my go-to given favorite burger. But I'm also fine with just a regular burger with cheese. Like I'm not picky. I obviously don't do vegetables like lettuce, tomato, onion, all that shit. Because <laughs> that shit belongs in a rabbit cage, not on my burger. Uh, see, I love that. <laughs> Shame, 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 shame. I will say, though, the best burger I've ever had that is a meat burger was from, uh, and obviously this was a fair few years ago because I've been vegetarian for like four years now. But um, when I was like 16, 17, I've spoken about it a couple times before, the twins and I went on a road trip to Vancouver. Mm -hmm. And we were looking for, like it was our last day there or something, and we wanted to go to a 1950s style diner just for shits and giggles. And so we Googled them in the area and we found one called Lucy's Diner. And we were like, oh, it's close. We'll just go. It's got fairly decent ratings. We'll pop in. And they had, I think it was like, like a, a like the, all of the names of the burgers were after a family member. So I think it was like the grandpa burger or something like that. Mm-hmm. And, and I, I was like, oh, that seems interesting. I'll have that. And it was toasted bun, the burger patty, which was really quite good. Chili, a fried egg hot sauce and oh i can't remember what the other thing was um i think there were the mushrooms in there as well i don't know so something else one of the best burgers i've ever had because it was so like unusual from what everything else that i'd had i don't know it was so 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 good though so if lucy diner is still open like i said it's a few years ago now but if it's still over open and you find yourself over in vancouver pop in and try some of the burgers because it was absolutely fantastic. They had giant milkshakes as well. We we were so full afterwards we could barely move. Sorry, I'm drooling. <clears throat> that sounds really good. Also, sounds like the cops are after you. Yeah, well, they they they. I'm next to a fairly big street, and mm. uh, well, not completely next to it. I'm on a side street next to a fairly big street. You know what I mean? Yeah. And um, but the yeah, they so. They did I ever send you a picture of the coronary bypass burger that I got whenever I went to Atlanta back whenever I was living in Clayton? No. So this is not the best burger I've ever had because honestly, as far as burgers go, at least as far as the meat was concerned, very mediocre. However, this burger is the most outrageous thing I have ever eaten in my entire life. So what it was, was the buns were two grilled cheeses. So grilled cheese on bottom, grilled cheese on top. Holy crap, okay. Mayo, four patties, eight pieces of cheese, and 16 strips of bacon. Holy crap. On top of a mound, and whenever I say a mound, I mean the whole fucking plate was covered in tater tots that were smothered in nacho cheese and bacon. (laughs) America does it different, you know. It was the most outrageous thing. Also, it cost me an arm and a leg. Oh, I bet. That's a whole lot of like, food. It was 30 bucks. Now, they had they had a quadruple bypass, which is everything that you just heard, times four. <laughs> Why? Here's the thing, though. It's a challenge to where if you could eat that and all of the tater tots, your meal would be free. If not, it would have cost me like $130, and I did not want to pay that. Oof. Oof. But it it tempted me. The thought was there to where I was like, hmm, could I really put this thing down? <laughs> the answer was no. I couldn't even finish the regular one no, that I, I got. Yeah. However, it was, like I said, mediocre as far as the burger was concerned, but it was still fantastic. I couldn't breathe after I left. It was a great time. I, I don't know that I'd be able to eat a quarter of that. Again, I... <laughs> I still regret it to this day. Thinking about trying to eat it now makes me sick. Yeah. But it was fun the first time I tried it. (laughs) Worth it. Oh, 100% worth it. Speaking of worth it, Mm -hmm. this week's episode. (laughs) Yes, agree. (laughs) 
I, I tried to segue us out of our out of our Food continual tangent. loop of wherever yes. the hell we were going. Well, actually, a pretty good segue. The food in this anime looks so good. Oh my god, yes. I was so I was very hungry. Yeah. Like this was almost as bad as Food Wars. It's making Honestly. me want to snack the whole time I ate it. Yeah, I honestly, I feel like this is one of those those shows. If you tend to like to watch your anime while you eat or, you know, sparingly, like you'll watch one episode a day or something, watching this during dinner is the best time, I feel like. I, I was constantly pausing to get up and go get food whilst watching this because it just, everything in there looks so good. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, it all looked fantastic. It made me want to go camp, build a fire, and just cook shit over the fire. Yeah. Oh, it was fantastic. Delicious. I enjoyed it. Great show. Really, really good show. Fantastic second season. Oh yeah. And for those, if we haven't said it out loud already, Laid Back Camp, season two. That's what we're discussing. <laughs> yes. This week, yeah. Laid Back Camp is a very lovely little anime made by Studio C Station. Mm-hmm. And directed by Yoshiaki Kyogoku. Mm-hmm. Sure, let's go with that. And I tried to look up more of what the studio has done. Really, the only notable thing that they have done is Laid Back Camp, which mm-hmm. good for them. I want more. Yes, yeah, give us more, especially with this animation budget that they seem to have increased for the second season here. Yes, it was very subtle. It was like they wasted all the animation budget increase on the characters. Because the backgrounds were still just as incredible as the first season. Yeah, they do back- backgrounds absolutely phenomenally. And it's quite a challenge, I feel like. These backgrounds aren't simple with the amount of landscapes and sunsets and ocean views and even the more country slash city life. Like, it's mm-hmm. still country. It's not like they're in the middle of Tokyo or something. But, you know, even that is is done so, so, so well. So, um yeah, they, they, it's a very, very beautiful anime. But I do have good news for you, though. Oh. There is a film that has been confirmed for 2022. Nice. So we will get more. However, apparently from what people have said, apparently it looks like a time leap happens. Oh, okay. So maybe our girls are going to be adults for the next season. Who knows? Fun. Okay. Interesting. So, um, I, I my turn. <laughs> What? We take turns here? (laughs) Um, Yeah, so Laid Back Camp Season 2 is a PG-13. I feel like, let me just double check this, that the first season was also a PG-13. I don't have that in my notes, so let me just do a quick Google. Is it on the schedule? Uh, I just looked to see if it was, and it's not because I haven't gone back and done it yet. Um... That'll be fine. It's not like you have to go back and do it anyway. It is a PG-13. Okay, so they're both PG-13, so consistent. I feel like that's not necessary. I don't know why what has specific has made it a PG-13. It's got no swearing in it. It's got no nudity or sexual content in it. There's no violence. I don't know what specifically has made it a PG-13. I think it's Um, a slight nudity, if I had to guess. There are some... There's quite a few... Well, there's quite a few uh, uh, hot shots spring of them, scenes. Yeah, in the hot springs. I feel like I, that would be the only thing that can do it. I don't think that classifies it no. as that. Oh, and alcohol. The teacher does alcohol. like to drink, so I would say that and the hot spring scenes are probably what gives it that. Yeah. That being said, though, the hot spring scenes aren't at all sexualized. You know, sometimes you'll get those jokes of. Um, an anime character comparing boob sizes and then going over and squeezing the boobs. You know what I mean? It's a very common joke in anime. You don't get that in this show. It is very much of a just girls relaxing at a hot spring. So it's, I, I, it's very much like just them enjoying a hot spring. Yeah. Like there is, there is no plot here. No. If that makes sense. Yeah. So yeah, PG 13. I feel like if you're under 13 or if you're a parent, and you're not sure about showing this to a kid under 13, watch a couple episodes yourself. The episodes don't change in um, intensity. So if you watch the first episode and you think it's fine, it's not going to get worse. So 
I feel like you could watch one by yourself if you think that it's fine for your kid you can let them watch it but yeah parental guidance up to you um but yeah I feel like PG-13 might be a little bit extra but then I'm also I don't know I grew up in a beer drinking town like a brewery town so maybe it's just me um I grew up with my parents doing drugs this is totally okay. fine there you go <laughs> um yes yeah, so the scores for this are on anime planet it is an 8.55 out of 10 for the second season and a four out four and a half out of five for anime planet or a nine out of ten um and then the dropped rate for this second season is a 1.33 now let me just see what the drop rate was for the first season um and if you don't know what our dropped rate is it's where i go on anime planet <laughs> to double check the website there and they have a categorizing system where people that rank like that watch things can say whether they've finished watching it whether they've uh, are currently watching it whether they've dropped it or whether they want to watch it i exclude want to watch take the other three find the percentage of them and that's what gives me the dropped rate for how frequently things are dropped our current most dropped show is Tamayomi with a 25.59% drop rate, which is, I'm going to say, solely down to the horrific animation that happens during that season. I'm assuming we came to the conclusion that it got so bad because of COVID. I don't know, though. Animation is so bad, like a couple episodes in, and then throughout the rest of the season. So it's the baseball girls anime, if you've seen it advertised anywhere. Worst dropped. Our current best dropped rate is Jujutsu Kaisen. Shocking. With a 0.91. I haven't quite gone through all of the ones from the past yet. I've only gone up to episode 60 and then some more of the recent ones. So I do have about 10 or so more to do. Um, and when I finish those, I will let you know the standings. But to be honest, I don't think those are going to change. Anyway, laid back <clears> camp. Where did it go? Um... Although I still don't believe it. I think that free still deserves to be the free? biggest drop Excuse rate. You, out of the... you, Not free. Dive. Fuck. Dive. That's it. <laughs> free is fantastic. Don't pay attention to a word I said. Editor, cut that out. <laughs> I love how I say that, like, we can afford an actual editor. I know, right? Oh, funnily <laughs> enough, Laid Back Camp was right after Baseball Girls or Tamayomi um, with a 4.5%. So, I will also say that whilst ranking the best and worst, we do not count movies or second seasons. Movies, because obviously they are less likely to be dropped. As somebody started a movie, they're more likely to watch it through. And second seasons, they've already filtered out the people who are likely to drop it. So they tend to have better ratings than first seasons. So when taking the best and worst, I only look at um, first seasons of series. But this with a 1.33 is a very, very solid score compared to the 4.5 uh, for the first season. I feel like it is doing pretty darn well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, quick overview, and then we'll put on spoiler chicken hats. So, if you haven't heard about Laidback Camp, I highly recommend that you check out our first episode on it. It is episode 58. So, if you want to go back and check that out, you can, and that will give you a, a good idea of the first season. But this is very much a continuous thing, it's not very different at all. It is surrounding a group of high school girls who are going camping around Japan. And it is pretty much an advertisement for different places to travel in Japan. So if you are curious about places to go, places to eat, tourist attractions, all that kind of stuff in Japan, especially during the off season during winter, I highly, highly, highly recommend that you check this out because a lot of the places that are shown here, I'm not sure if all of them are, but a lot of the places are legit places in Japan. So... Um, yeah, give us a watch and, and you might actually get ideas of places you want to visit when you travel there, especially during the winter season. So yeah, it's about these girls that um, that go camping during winter and uh, it's about their friendship with each other. It's about their relationship with their teacher. It's about the one of the best gramps in anime, I feel like, and that's a very, very tough category, but we've got a solid gramps in this show. It's very comfy. There's some really, really good music. OP and ED are phenomenal for this season. 
and um, some really good folk background music. It's very comfy. Like we said, the animation's fantastic. The food in it looks so, so good. Very gentle storyline. Fantastic thing to watch when you're winding down for the day or when you just start a day. If you're winding up the day, the next day you'll have to plan an adventure because it makes you feel like you want to just go exploring. And uh, if you're starting your day with it, then uh, you're be aware that you're probably going to have a pretty busy day because it's just going to make you want to do stuff. I give it a two. A two? I'm kidding. Rude. <laughs> Rude. But to find out our real scores, you'll have to listen to the rest of the episode. So, spoiler chicken hats on! Yeah! yeah. How do we want to do this? Um, I feel like it does have a linear story, this one, as opposed to Oh, well, the first one did as well, but it was kind of a little bit more individual sket. Uh, sk- <laughs> <laughs> that bad, you bad, you bad. <laughs> that is our mutual friend that did that to me because he kept talking about how he was laughing about how you did that last episode. <laughs> yeah, he he did the same thing to yeah. me, uh- <laughs> and now it's in my brain. It's the combination of the word skit and sketch where we end up saying sket, which is not. <laughs> That bad, you bad, you bad. (laughs) Ah, I'm gonna say that so often now because it's implanted in my brain. Oh my goodness! Sketch. Yeah, it is very linear, although not a whole lot happens. No, throughout the season, like every episode is either camping prep or camping. However, the adventures that our... Is it a sex tuplet? Is there six of them? One, two, three, four, five. Five girls plus sensei and big sister. So seven, if you include those, or just the five girls. Uh, yeah. So you have our main five, and then you have little sister, and then sensei. <clears throat> but just like seeing the different combinations and different dynamics of all the characters going out camping, uh, Nadeshko's first, uh, solo camping. Yeah. And it's all just fun. It was great fun. Yeah. Um, okay. I feel like we can kind of just talk about our favorites with this one because yeah, there is the the linear storyline for it, but it's so chill that I feel like it would be fine to just kind of talk about our favorite bits. Oh yeah, like I feel like an episode by episode thing isn't necessary just because no. the story that's being told. Although it is kind of, I do definitely think that the favorite bits are going to be a lot more interesting to talk about. With the first thing being first, their trip to Caribou and hugging the giant deer. Yes, yeah, that was very cute. Yeah, so that was actually kind of set up in the first season where. Um, uh, Narishiko was so excited to get the the lantern mm-hmm. and then our relationship with Caribou kind of became a thing like the the big camping store uh, so seeing that continued that plot, that storyline continued and, and the infatuation with the store um, was very like heartwarming, nice to see mm-hmm. yeah watching the girls fawn over the giant <laughs> fucking deer and like having to hug it Mm. And the way that Chiaki just tries to get away from the giant caribou, but then ends up just having to go back and hug it anyway. It's great. Yeah, there's quite a few um, stuffed bears in like airports and gift shops out here in, in Canada. I don't know if you get them in America. Do you do that in America? Uh... Taxidermy stuff in like tourist places. Not in touristy places. Now, if you decide to go into a Bass Pro Shop or Cabela's, on the Mm -hmm. other hand, Mm -hmm. you're going to see a lot of stuff things. But touristy areas, nah. Yeah. No, we have them in... in, We have Bass Pro Shop up here as well. And Mm -hmm. uh, and so, yeah, we get polar bears and grizzlies and black bears and elk. Oh, how the fuck are you going to do that to a polar bear, you asshole? Hey, it wasn't me. (laughs) I I wasn't directing that towards you. (laughs) Um... I have no reason to call you an asshole yet. Yet. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we have them. If you go to like 
Lake Louise or Banff or Jasper or something in Alberta, or I'm sure they have probably have them in BC as well, maybe in like Golden and a couple of the other. Like if you're in the Rockies and you go to the the big touristy places there, you'll quite often see um, taxidermied giant animals and or a giant stuffed moose, not a real moose, like a standing up stuffy, you know, those huge ones, but like they're only on two legs and so they mm. look real. And they'll be wearing uh, RCMP uniform. You know, the red one with the funny hat. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, and it's a stuffed moose wearing an RCMP uniform. This is the greatest thing I've ever heard other than the Greek that you were speaking for the first half of that statement. <laughs> Whatever you're talking about, all the different cities and stuff, I was like, what the fuck is she saying? Oh, my God. These are world-renowned places. People come all the way to Canada just to go to those places. On like I don't believe it. That's a lie. I'm being fed lies. Nobody wants to come to your icicle of a country. Yes, this is the thing that I'm talking about. I'm going to send you this image. And there is a child for size comparison oh my god that is amazing can i buy one of those i would totally buy that i maybe look on ebay i'm not sure um because they're quite fairly common i feel like they're they're a decently common thing to find in like the mountains area i feel like there are quite a few like gas stations and stuff they're just outside are you looking uh yes (laughs) <laughs> they have a miniature one that I can buy but I cannot buy a giant one this is bullshit well done they're tall too with the antlers they're probably over 6 foot 5 okay next thing to google how to steal giant moves <laughs> why do I feel like that was a thing if it's not it should be I feel like there was a small town in Alberta that had some giant Canadian sculpture stolen and it was in the local paper. Small town shenanigans. (laughs) And it was like a eight foot moose or something. It was huge and it was stolen and people were upset about it because it was the community's friend. (laughs) And I I remember it... (laughs) I remember it being in the paper only fairly recently, about six months ago, maybe. It was the community's friend. (laughs) What asshole would do such a thing? How dare they? But the thing about it was, is that it was completely missing. And everyone was really kerfuffled about it. Because you can't exactly sell that without somebody being able to find it. It's such a specific thing. Who would steal it to sell it? I would steal it to keep it. Just keep it in your garden. Could could you imagine putting that thing in your house? Okay. (laughs) Somebody breaks in and just staring at them in the dark. It's just a giant moose in the Canadian guard uniform. That's funny. Especially if you give it like an axe or a gun or some shit just to stand there and hold. Yeah. That would be horrifying and also great. Just give it. Yeah. Just have a hatchet. Just, just. Hold the hatchet. Could you imagine getting up in the middle of the night to go get water and then accidentally bumping into that thing? Oh my god. That would become your night terror demon. You could swap out the eyes for um, glow-in-the-dark ones or something. <gasps> LED lights. Yes. That would be amazing. I now have ideas. <laughs> <laughs> but I've seen those same like gas station shops put like fairy lights around their antlers at Christmas time. Oh, that's and things. Hang yeah. ornaments off of the antlers, too. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. So if you ever find yourself in the mountains in, in Canada, you'll probably bump into a giant moose that um, won't attack you. But then if you do jump into a moose that is living, um, please be careful. They're way they're way more dangerous than, like, anything else. I mean, maybe a goose, a Canadian goose. but like Canada also, gooses are scary. They're so... They're insane. But... Um, yeah, moose are, are very, very, very dangerous. They are, might be herbivores, but they're terrifying. And huge. Huge. They will impale you multiple times. <laughs> and they can swim and dive. Oh, that's even more horrifying. <laughs> like, like, there was, I think there was a diver in a lake, and um, 
And I think he was he was doing I don't know an investigation or photography or something out there, and then he got attacked by an underwater moose. The fuck! I'm looking this up. How long can a moose breathe under? Well, they can't breathe underwater, but hold their breath. <laughs> <laughs> Could you imagine a moose with gills? Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! The first this is insane. The first I just typed in how long on Google, and the first option is how long do moose live? The answer is fifteen to twenty-five years. But Google, you're freaking me out here. <laughs> it can hear you. <laughs> how long can a moose hold their breath? One time, a large bull moose knocked the tripod over underwater. That was not great. <laughs> the hell! Fantastic quote. This there. is not the info we're looking for. No. They can dive up to 20 feet underwater. That's not a lot of feet. For a moose, that's a fair amount of feet. That's not a lot of feet. I think it, they can run up to 35 mile an hour, just saying. Okay. And they can hold their breath for over a minute. So, I mean, but for a giant moose, <laughs> could you imagine you're just like in the water and then all of a sudden there's a moose? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this is a conversation I can only have with a Canadian. Could you imagine <laughs> swimming along and all of a sudden, moose? <laughs> Honestly, though, like that's so scary. What is um, the description of this episode going to be? <laughs> uh, uh, how do you like your burgers? Have you ever seen a moose underwater? And maybe we'll get to the episode at some point. <laughs> Hell, who knows? Okay, back to the episode. <laughs> Sorry about that. I got distracted by moose. Okay, <laughs> that's going to be the whole description of the episode. No usual opening spiel, just moose. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to think it's an April Fool's joke. <laughs> no, no, it's just me being Canadian. <laughs> Oh my god! Uh, but yeah, they're genuinely huge. They're terrifying. Uh -huh. um, yeah, we used to see them all the time at the dog park. They would just um, wander through. It's the most Canadian thing I've ever heard. Oh, okay. Stupid American story. <laughs> okay. I, I enjoy these. They make me chuckle. Um, there's plenty of stupid Canadians and Brits too, but this one specifically made me laugh. Um, it was a group of tourists were out in BC in the mountains and they were there. I think they were, yeah, they were there on like a helicopter ride or something that was like, you know, one of the fancy things where you go up in the Rockies and you spend a fortune to go fly around and stuff. Mm -hmm. And they just landed and then they were going through the little village. And whilst they were there, um, they saw two bald eagles flying overhead and they turned to their tour guide and they said, wow, this is an amazing tour. Uh, you even got the bald eagles out for us. I didn't know you did that. And the tour guide had to be like, they they do live here as well. They're not, they're not just American. That was just, I didn't specifically order bald eagles to come out and fly for you because you're American. They just, they they live here too. No, 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 no. From a perspective of getting a larger tip, they should have pretended that they did that just for them. Mm. Absolutely. Big yeah, brain. it's a once, it's a, it's a one in a thousand ticket chance. You were the lucky winner of a private Bald Eagle show. Exactly. So then if I never get it again, then that's why. <laughs> oh... Okay, anyway, distracted. I promise we're going to discuss the episode. Favourite scene? Um, yes, so uh, I want to try Japanese curry noodles. That's your favourite scene? No, it's not, but <laughs> it was the title of the first episode. Well, no, it's not. It's curry noodles are the best travel companion. And um, I saw that and I thought, I they've shown curry noodles, like the instant curry noodles, quite a few times in this show. And I'm curious. It does make me want to go on Amazon Japan and just order a bunch of Japanese cup noodles. Yeah. Because I bet they would be delicious. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah. And then there's New Year's right at the beginning of, of the show as well, where they go to, um, well, they will kind of split up and, and go different ways for for New Year's, which is actually kind of nice mm -hmm. to see them all kind of doing their own thing and then and then talking to each other through text and stuff. The, the text chat 
it's probably one of my favorite parts of this anime how they continuously keep um contact with each other through through showing the text and the messages and stuff and there's quite a few good jokes that are purely done in written form or photograph form throughout mm-hmm. those those text chats not only that but the pine cones and the woods talking finally became canon for a little bit <laughs> that's true yes it did and, it was, and then they got burned and they were just crying <laughs> crying for help oh i loved it it was it was probably the smartest thing I've ever seen the show do, if that makes sense, from like a fourth wall perspective. Yeah. I loved it. It was great. I love all the little running jokes the show kept from the first season. I love the reaction faces mm-hmm. from the characters in this. Like, there's never a dull moment with the show. The last episode had two super solid reaction faces um in within like a scene of each other Mm -hmm. there was uh a moment where they were standing on top of the mountain and they saw a um like a a locational sign to like show you where it is and it was marked with a cross Mm -hmm. and they turned all of their mouths into cross shapes which Mm -hmm. is hilarious and then and then shortly after that or before um there was a a automatic camera that went off when they were on a gondola going up the mountain yes it was before Mm -hmm. yeah that was whenever they were um at the campsite exploring and the camera went off and it caught um our two main main characters nadishiko and rin uh, unawares and their surprise face was also very hilarious it was and that was yeah and that so for two just like instant um, examples of the reaction faces. The last episode has has some fantastic ones. Oh my god! Another one of my favorite bits was whenever Nadeshka was sleeping on the way there, and uh, yeah, Al was just waiting outside the door. They finally get her up. And they're like, "Oh my god, you've slept for the whole three days!" <laughs> like yeah, we're, we're finally going home, home now. <laughs> and her reaction was just beautiful yeah and then Hiko being just gullible enough to believe that and then she goes up to Reen and she's like what, what, what day is it <laughs> I also really liked Enna's sort of more um inclusion into the group because she was absolutely in the group in the first season but she is still part of the going home club and stuff like that so she wasn't a part of the club and the club was more of a feature in the first season less of a feature now it's more just to do with the friend group Mm -hmm. and uh and so she wasn't she was more of a side character whereas this she was kind of in the shenanigans with everybody consistently throughout which we do like to see Mm -hmm. although we did get less of her doggo in this but we've got other doggos to replace so you know i'm not mad doggos are best doggos Doggos are best doggos. There was wasabi ice cream featured in this that made me very curious. I'm also very curious because I know how hot wasabi is. Yeah. And I also know how cold ice cream is. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it makes me... Because isn't there that thing where it's like um, wasabi over here is horseradish and that's what makes it really spicy, but actual wasabi is supposed to be sweet? I don't know. And I don't, I, that's just like an urban legend or like a rumor I've heard. And I don't know if that's factually correct or just something that people tell people. Um, But it makes me curious because if it's actual wasabi and wasabi is sweet, then is it just sweet on sweet? But then their reactions say that it was spicy on sweet. And I don't know. I'm just, (laughs) is it horseradish? Is it wasabi? Is it a rumor? Well, it is a rumor, but is it an actual, a factual rumor? So wasabi is wasabi is Japanese horseradish. Oh, so it is just it's just a different variant of horseradish. Yes. Okay. I had to do some Google because I'm like, oh my god, if we have been lied to here, I'm going to be so pissed. Yeah, well, it's one of those things I'd heard on on the web, you know, and mm. I was like, oh, I don't know if I believe that or not. But then when I was showing it in the show and they paired it with ice cream, I was like, is this just a strange thing that they do? that's like a tourist attraction kind of thing like that black ice cream that went famous on instagram a little while ago or is it an actual pairing i don't know i'm very intrigued well it's one of those things to where i feel like you would do something like that just because of the sensory overload that it causes is very stimulating to the senses 
Like yeah. I know I love to pair like hot and cold foods together. I also love to ride in the winter with my window down and the heat on. Yeah. Just because it's a weird sensation, but it feels amazing. But it's also really weird too, because that's like different sensory overload in a sense yeah because wasabi gets real hot real quick and ice cream although it's cold isn't cold if that makes sense no like your taste buds and nerves in your mouth don't feel cold the same way that it feels spice no so and also cold wasabi being hot like that's weird yeah but also, like, it's it seemed to be paired with just a vanilla ice cream, and vanilla is kind of neutral, I guess. It's on the sweet side, but it's not, like, chocolate, you know? So, and but even then, like, you pair chocolate and chili and chocolate and bacon and, and chocolate and, and salt coffee, you know? So you do quite often pair a sweet with a bitter. So a sweet with a spice. I don't know. I want to try it. Have you ever had like a, a spicy honey thing, like honey and spice? I have had, uh, I've had something kind of similar. I've had some like spicy orange sweet and sour chicken somewhere. Mm. And that was interesting to say the least. Like right. that was a whole lot of flavor combo that kind of fried my brain. And then you had the temperature difference on top of that. Mm -hmm. I mean, interesting. I'm intrigued. Um, what else was there that was really good? There were some really, really nice, consistent side character storylines. Like, there was a couple of characters that they met in an earlier episode, and then they kept kind of reappearing throughout the season. Mm -hmm. I really, really liked that. I thought that was a really good show. Like I said, I feel like this anime is kind of an advertisement for Travel Japan. You know, I feel like there's an airline that's like, hey, come to Japan. They could use this as, like, a a reason why to come to Japan watch this anime. You know, one hundred percent. Like I immediately wanted to message you and be like, "Hey, we need a B and B sponsored trip to Japan to go camping Honestly, here yeah. soon, and and check out these places." Um, but I feel like they they hit off a point with the um neighborhood community aspect in this season that was there in the second in the first season. Sorry, but is um so much more prominent in this season. They've really really gone out and hit the community the community vibes here and, and then the local like well not even local they're quite far away from each other but like the neighborhood feeling of mm -hmm. the anime yeah yeah everybody's just so nice like you didn't have any assholes did you want to talk about the fog on the glasses yes oh my god attention to detail in this anime is just impeccable okay so you had chiaki who was outside wandering around in the cold. It's winter, very cold. As somebody who wears glasses, I have dealt with this shit. It frustrates me. It's the yeah, reason why too. I wear contacts. If this shit didn't happen, I probably wouldn't wear contacts. Mm. But summer and winter fucking suck because whenever you go in and outside, your glasses get foggy as shit. Mm -hmm. This anime did that. Chiaki went from outside to inside the tent, and the second she walks in, you just see her glasses being glazed over mm -hmm. with uh, steam, fog, whatever the fuck it is. Anyway, <clears throat> like just seeing that and the attention to detail, and she even pulled her glasses off and started cleaning it. Ah, I love it. Yeah, and, and it wasn't even just like a one wipe of the cloth and all of the fog is gone. They went through and wiped away sections of the frame. Mm-hmm um of the lens sorry and and it was it was such a small detail that was a really really good example of the amount of detail that goes into this show uh that kind of that moment sort of capture like cap capitalizes cap capitalizes cap um no like captures overview over like you know what i mean it shows everything <laughs> It's a pinpoint moment that shows how good the anime is consistently throughout the show. Do we do we want to talk about another reference in the show? Yeah. This one's all you, mate. Oh, uh, huh. <laughs> you know which one I'm referring to. Do I? I'm confused. The whole reason I watched that show was because of you. Uh, I don't know. G what? G G oh, duh, yeah. Um, yeah, there is... <laughs> I sent you that as well. Um, there is a, 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 
I don't know how to describe it. It's like uh There's a karate reference. Yeah, it's it's a karate reference and it's like um it was Nadeshiko, right? Uh-huh. Who was organizing her thoughts and and having an internal monologue and the depiction that they used for this internal monologue was uh, Karata, which is the main focus of w- the show that kind of started this whole thing for Brad and I, um, uh, which I've just forgotten the name of because ADHD. Chihaya Furu. Thank you very much. I said it like you literally said it thirty seconds ago. I know. I'm having one of those days. Um, <laughs> but yes, uh, uh, and the, the, we saw that, and I sent. I took. Uh, picture of it and send it to brad and he goes i was just about to send it to you but i didn't want to because i didn't want to spoil it uh because i was like an episode behind him at the time and it was it was a a very it was a nice fangirl moment i i enjoyed it a lot and i wanted to i wanted to send it to blue and i was like nope because i know how she is she wasted the last fucking minute to watch things and i'm not going to spoil that for her (laughs) i didn't do so bad this time okay watching it at the last minute you really didn't like i think you started yeah. on wednesday which is a day that's to two days bad. sooner for you yeah yeah i know that's not bad um and then what else was there that was really good are the camping tips throughout still very very consistently good they did i feel like focus a little bit more on the food side although though in the early season there was um a series of events that led to talking about temperature and and they actually went through things to look for when you're solo camping as well they made a checklist of of things to go through when you're solo camping to make sure one thing i didn't notice with that was that they said to tell family and friends where you're going first that was number one on the checklist first thing to do and the second thing to do was to choose your campsite (laughs) which i found interesting that they did it that way around and not choose your campsite first then tell your family and friends where you're going well i mean i kind of get it because you're obviously trying to figure out a prefecture where you're going to go first yeah. so as long as you give them a prefecture a general idea of where you're going to go then it wouldn't be that hard to figure out from there so i get it yeah i do get it as well especially considering a lot of campsites um you uh, some of them you can't reserve online it's just first comes first serve Mm -hmm. so if you're like oh this is the one that i'm going to and then you get there and it's full and then you end up at a different one and you're out of signal you can't tell them but i feel like it's also just from someone who has camped a lot since i was very very small you can let somebody know i'm going to be in this area and also i think i'm going to be staying at this campsite as well so but yes that was a good tip um but yeah there was there was some there was two really kind of heartwarming um moments in the show with the two main characters caring for each other a lot mm-hmm. the first one happens when nadashiko goes solo camping for the first time on her own after she hears rin talking about the kind of beauty and being by yourself in nature and appreciating loneliness and so she gets inspired to go and she goes by herself and her sister sakura and uh, Rin individually end up going to kind of I would say track her but yes basically track her and, and watch out for her. Rin's actually going camping on her own in a, in kind of the area but was going to a different site and um, and it's just a really sweet moment where they kind of back off from her they don't ever interact with her at all so they let her have her camping experience but they um, get to I don't know, they they like support her from afar, which I thought was a really, really cute moment. We also get to see some good jokes from Sakura, the older sister, here as well, with her obsession with that anime uh, moped tour. Oh, moped, moped like moped journey or moped, moped tour, journey. something like that. Something like that, yeah. Which there were some good jokes about that um, there as well. And then obviously the other, the reverse side of that was um at the the last episode of the anime where rin is coming home from their group trip that they all went on together in the um later part of the new year and uh she is on her moped coming home and the rest of the girls are in the teacher's van and they arrive home earlier because rin can't go on the main highways so she's going through back alleys and that obviously takes a lot longer and so um Narishiko ends up worrying about her and her safety and drags her sister out to uh, I guess the town entrance um late at night 
to welcome her home and it was kind of the the reverse side of that where Rin's like oh you didn't need to worry about me and then she has the flashback to the time when she was worried about Lady Shiko and uh it was like a full circle moment it was very very sweet and a good relationship for the two friends to have considering both of them were kind of alone at the beginning of the first season Rin because she's more of a, a loner type person and Lady Shiko because she was new to the area mm-hmm. it's just a really sweet moment mm. Uh, there was also a very interesting cat that Brad sent me a picture of this, this season. <laughs> I don't know why, but for some reason, whenever I was imagining that whole scenario, the cat was just outside the door looking in. I was just like, yes, mortals, keep me locked outside. Do not let me in for the havoc I shall wreak. Is that of a god? <laughs> I don't know why I had that inner monologue hit my head but oh god it was it was so stupid but of course since i had that inner monologue i had to send it to you so that way you could see what was going on in my brain (laughs) (laughs) it was it was very funny and i did have a good chuckle uh so yeah if you see that cat let us know what you think he's thinking oh my god it was wonderful Uh, mm -hmm. what else was there that i thought was really good i'm not sure really i think i've kind of gone through my brain a bit I think I've kind of went through everything as well. I mean, it was just several camping trips with delicious food. Although, I say several, it wasn't a whole lot. There's like maybe four camping trips this season spread out across 13 episodes, but they were really expanded upon. Yeah, especially the last camping trip. So when they go to Izu, uh, that ends up taking one, It was four episodes. It started in episode 10. Five episodes if you include the prep day of episode nine, which is obviously prepping for. Mm -hmm. um, Oh, yeah, that was just a lot of, like, background, like, school stuff and whatnot. Yeah, and it is technically the day they depart as well as in episode nine. But, yeah, it's kind of mainly episodes 10 through 13. And I feel like that's whenever the most shenanigans happened as well was during that trip. Yes. Yeah. There were some birthday celebrations in episode 12 that was super cute. And they got to see some capybaras as well, which mm-hmm. are, um, I want to see them in Hot Springs as well. That's hilarious. Mm-hmm. Um, the jokes that Al played on her sister with the <laughs> island. Yeah, and and um, uh, Chiaka Akai during the narration of their lives over, over them. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> It's just everything about this is so likable. It's not something that you can binge by any means because it's very hard to sit down and binge the show because it's so cozy. Yeah, I feel like it is a fantastic show to watch broken up over time. It's, I, I, yeah, I wouldn't consider it bingeable at all, but absolutely consider watching this before going on holiday. I feel like it's really going to spark your interest to go out and explore more off the beaten path type areas Mm -hmm. Uh, so if you find yourself being one of those more um like a resort type travelers and you want to explore further further around but you kind of find it hard to get the 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 gumption to be able to do so Mm -hmm. watch an episode of this and i feel like it'll give you the passion and energy that you need to to step off into you know more unusual areas and and go exploring a bit because it definitely makes me want to um go out and about and and see new things as somebody who hates camping i want to go camping because of the santa fe (laughs) yeah no it's made me actually look up campsites that are local to myself that i can go some i could go do some solo camping um and myself towards the end of the season before the snow sets in Yeah. yeah do it we'll see We'll see. Uh, oh, I forgot to mention more about uh, Rin's grandpa. He is the best granddad I've come across in anime in quite a while. And like I was saying to Brad, this is a very, very tough category. I feel like parents are a pretty easy category. Most parents in anime are shite or dead. So <laughs> Then you have some moms that are best moms. And then yeah. it's, which is why I think best mom actually wasn't that part of our anime awards best mom and most shit dad like, wasn't that I, th- in our I think it was I think it was that way around yeah <laughs> oh my god but yeah uh, grandpas are another one of those categories where the, it is pretty damn tough dads are horrible in anime but grandpas they're pretty damn good so I feel like this grandpa's gonna take our 
is going to take the cake for this year, though, if we decide to make that a thing. Because the only other grandpa that we've really had this year was Arata from Chihaya, his grandpa. Mm. I think it's really the only one that we've had this year kind of going over everything. I'm trying to see if there are any others that I know of from this year. Just from looking at our list. Nope. No. Oh, I suppose the very beginning episode of Jujutsu Kaisen. But that's so quick. Yeah, he doesn't really get built upon that no, much. No, he's, he's just a small character. He's only featured for a little bit. We have. Um, and then he's not really shown anymore after that. So, um... We don't have anything else on the schedule either that could make up for best grandpa for now. However, we do have an entry coming up here in a couple of months that will be in the running for best mom. Mm. Cause I don't know if you've ever seen erased, but I've read the manga for erased and that's going to be top contender for best mom for the year. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. I'm intrigued. Okay, cool. Um, but yeah, Reen's grandfather, best, best granddad of the year. Yes. Hands down. It's funny. Sorry, I just malfunctioned a little bit there. Uh, I sometimes watch this show and half expect things to happen because I'm so, like, invaded. My brain is so invaded by all the other kinds of anime that we watch. So I was watching the scene where Rin and her grandpa get on their motorbike after, like, leaving really early in the morning. And my brain was just going, he's going to get hit by a truck. (laughs) (laughs) You know what I mean, though? Laid back camp turns into an isekai. No, honestly, it's just like something tragic is going to happen. <laughs> and I find that that happens quite a lot throughout watching this this anime in particular. Something about how chill and relaxed this is. My brain just goes, the worst thing you can possibly think of is going to happen now. <laughs> and yeah, it's happened, it's happened quite a few times. I'm trying to think. There was another moment. Oh, actually, with Gramps, that happened twice. It was um, once when he, when they were driving together and he said, I'm so glad that I got to ride with you. Um, and then there was another time when he left to go to the store just beforehand and she told him to be safe. And I feel like those are the two, like, triggers that you see. The two, um, oh, what is it called? You know when you get a hint of something before they show you the thing? Mm-hmm. Um, oh, what is that device? foreshadowing thank you that's the word those are the two like foreshadowing things that i feel like you see quite often in anime is the be safe and then they're never safe or the i'm so glad we got to do blank for the first slash last or whatever time and then sadness happens you know what i mean Mm -hmm. so i those happen and i was like death is coming and i was like no wait this is laid back camp you need to chill well i i hate to break it to you mate but if there was anybody in this show that they would kill off, it would be Grams. No, no. Yeah. If they were going to go for somebody that would like really affect the group, I think they'd have to go for Sakura, the older sister. Uh huh. Huh. Again, just due to like typical anime plot devices, if they were going to kill off anyone, she would be the main one that comes to mind of somebody that they would just off for growth. And then Narishiko would have her moment of, she used to be so bubbly, now she never smiles, and her hair would change. And then Rian would have to pull her out. Yeah, and Rian would have a transformation of always being the gloomy, quiet one to then become the bubbly one of the group. Mm-hmm. Like, she would have to become the Nadeshko for, uh, for her to be able to come back out. And Ali and Ch- uh, Cheki and... Anna would probably like separate off from the group for a while before having to be gathered back in. We literally just basically made the plot to Fuka. Basically. <laughs> Speaking of Fuka, I think it did fairly badly on our um, dropped rate list. Well, you know what? Nothing. Actually, I think it stayed below 10% because everything that had like a kind of slightly high rate I kind of looked at and was like, huh, interesting. Fuka was not one of my ones that I checked. Uh, it is a 10.37. Mm. 
Well, you know what doesn't suck about Fuka? The manga. I think that's the thing, is I find that animes that have such a large drop rate tend to either have huge animation drops or very, very differently. They're consistent, 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 and then they stray from the manga. And I feel like as soon as that happens, people will drop it immediately. I guarantee you people dropped it on that episode. Yeah. I would bet money. Because that... That bit pissed me off royally. You know how I was saying that I don't think anything could top Tamayomi? Uh Uh-huh. I feel like there's a chance that The Promised Neverland Season 2, which I haven't yet done the maths of, could drop. But it was the last episode of that specifically that was so dramatically different and What do you mean? Everything from Episode 3 on was shit. yeah. Yeah, fair. But, like, the the last episode specifically is what I feel like most people get up in arms about. Well, Um, again, just from watching the whole anime community explode, around episodes five or six is whenever people started to catch on to what they were doing. Yeah. And so from there to the very end of season two is whenever literally the whole anime community just fucking exploded over how shit the show had become. You know what? I might talk to our website guy about adding the dropped rate onto the website and Blue and Brad's ratings on on the website as well and see see if we can do that per episode that's released or have a different page on the website where all of our rankings are and, and how we have them categorized. If you guys would find that interesting. So let me know in the comments if you think that would be something that you would be interested in scrolling through on the website because if you are then i'll talk to our website guy and see if we can't add that as a page on the website if anything we should potentially have like a top 10 for each of us yeah and do something like that top 10 worst 10 bottom 10 top and bottom 10 but i'd like to try and get the whole list out there but we'll see yeah we we shall we shall see yeah but yeah so one thing we did not touch on even though blue kind of slightly touched on it mm-hmm the OP and ED for this season was absolutely fantastic. Me personally, I was a bigger fan of the OP than the ED, although I was a big fan of like the kind of ballad ED, but the OP is Tanaka Kun levels of fantastic. I was more of a fan of the ED than the OP, but I really did like the OP as well. The ED is definitely what I would consider to be like indie pop or like alternative pop. It was very, very good. There was a lot of folk music consistently throughout the background of the anime um, itself. A lot of fiddles and flutes and things that really, really fit the vibe and the atmosphere a lot. And I feel like the ED was a really, really good end that kind of tipped the hat to the backing track throughout the rest of the anime, but was also that pop style that really tied it in with the OP as well, because the OP is definitely pop. Um, but it was it, both of them were really, really phenomenal, and I could see both of them going onto a playlist for me. Yes, one one hundred percent. And I'm really pissed that the OP is not available on Apple Music, at least that I could find. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do some more digging. Yeah, I'm not sure who did it, but the OP is um, I can only think <laughs> Carpe Diem. What is it in English? It seize the day. Seize the day. Thank you. I've got it. The you know the Robin Williams film. Hmm. Um, I don't know about that, what, that film. Um, and every time I hear Seize the Day, I, my brain remembers it as Coffee Diem. So I invented a dad joke the other day. Oh, okay. What is Robin Williams' favorite thrifting pastime? What? Goodwill hunting. <sighs> Fantastic. That's such a good joke. <laughs> oh, it's such a niche joke, but if you get it, it's great. It's such a good joke. <laughs> no, I love that. I got a knife block today in a thrift store. Look at you go. I know. Fancy, right? I really want to get one of those like Japanese knife block knife collections. Because mm-hmm. Japanese knives are top notch of knives mm-hmm. that you could buy and i yeah. really want to get a set because i know if i get a set as well as i take care of my knives if i ever have kids they could get them their kids could get them like that kind of thing like they will yeah. last forever yeah and i just i just really want some mm-hmm. but back on track so the 
artist who did seize the day for the show is Asuka. Mm -hmm. And the artist who did the ED is Eri Sasaki. Nice. Both of them are fantastic. If you like anime music... I would recommend giving them a check out because I feel I, I feel like they're kind of a little bit more unusual than the typical anime OPs and EDs, but they're very, very listenable. And um, I really enjoy both of them. So so give them a listen if you haven't heard them already or if you skip them um, like I tend to do. <laughs> maybe maybe give them another listen through and just and see what you think again. Yeah. 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 So ratings. I'm going to have to agree with Anime Planet. I'm going to give it a 9. I'm also at a 9. Oh, look at that. You're not here to undermine me for once. No, I was actually debating on a 9 or a 9.5, but I settled on a 9 because of its lack of bingeability. Um, I figured and that, that would yeah. put it at a 9.5 instead of a 10 for you, because I know you said this is officially in your top 5 anime of all time. Yeah, I it's definitely top 10. I'm not sure if it's ranking yet, but it's really in there at, uh, at the top there. It's so, so flipping good, both the first season and the second season. Um, and I'm, I'm really sitting there between a nine and a nine and a half. I feel like I've gotten so much more critical of my um, ratings, though, of anime. The more and more we do this, the more and more critical I get. See, I feel like mine at first started to get more critical, and now it's kind of laxing a bit. Either that, or I'm being so much more particular with what I schedule to where I try to schedule things that we're either going to like more or have more to talk about. Yeah. So I don't know if it's just that, but I'm enjoying everything that we're watching, which is probably why I don't need to be left in charge of the schedule. <laughs> No, I feel I feel like we still do throw in some kind of random things there though on the list. So every now and again we will get something that um that's just a little bit random. But Yeah, like if you throw me a curveball or if there's something new that's coming out that we wanna cover, like Remain, the new water polo anime that's yes. coming out. I really want to sit down and cover uh To Your Eternity, which is done by the same people that did a silent voice. That's mm -hmm. coming up soon. Once that actually yeah. finishes up, so I'm looking forward to covering that. I don't know. We have quite a few curveballs coming up, except for what's coming up next week and the next few weeks. Yeah. We're going after some big names for the next few weeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, look yeah. at you not undermining me for once. No, I know. I know. We're nines across the board. Which yeah, is weird. Let us know what you rate the laid back camp season two, because, you know, I've said it before and I'll say it again. Brad and I are just idiots who don't know anything about film production or anything like that. I mean, we're learning more as we go, but um, we have no actual education in any of this shit. We're just two anime binging weirdos who have big mouths and like to share our opinions. So if you disagree with our opinions or you have your own thoughts or ideas or whatever, mm -hmm. and you would like to share, please, please, please do let us know because... Um, yeah, we love we love the discussion. We love to hear your opinions, and we love the open conversation. Yeah, hit us up in the comment sections on the YouTube at BNB Anime or on the Instagram at BNB Anime, or you know if you ever want to come at me directly, I do stream on Twitch at Brad Carter Gaming. So that is also a platform for you to be able to come and yeah. discuss anime with me because I'm there. Also, if you do decide to come at us and talk about our anime shenanigans, we will soon. I say we, I, will be streaming on the YouTube channel and uploading gameplay footage of anime games, more specifically the Demon Slayer game that's going to be coming out in the next couple of months. Yeah. So do be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel if you want to, you know, kind of take part and enjoy the shenanigans that are going to be anime games, because I kind of want an excuse to play more anime games. Yeah, for sure. And we may also be releasing in the future some uh, reactions to trailers whenever they drop so if you um want to see what our thoughts are on first releases and first trailers and stuff of new anime coming out then the, those videos may also be coming to the youtube channel at some point as well yeah also other plugs to get those out of the way i am on instagram at brad carter gaming blue is on instagram and twitter at Blue Lavender STM. And we also have a fancy smancy website that a friend of ours built, www.bnbanime.com, because bnbanime.com doesn't work for some reason. So be sure to put the www. 
Otherwise, yeah. who knows what the hell will happen? We still have yet. Yeah. We've been at this for a year and a half and can't fucking figure out what the deal is. No, we've been trying to work on it, and it just every time it works, it doesn't then work, and then it. it I don't know. Yeah, it might work for like a day, and then it goes to shit. So yeah. who knows? So, but www.bnvanime.com. That is a. You can find information about us, our projects, voiceover work, our IMDb pages, links to our Discord, socials, all that fun stuff, friends of the podcast and whatnot. Speaking of friends of the podcast, so David, or Tales from the Fandom, if y'all haven't checked mm. him out, please do. Blue and I have both been guests on there, so that's fancy smancy other things of listening to us talk about the shit that we enjoy. Yes. However, this is going to be news for you because I haven't told you this yet. But David went on a website called uh, Listen Notes or some shit like that. Mm -hmm. And the website lists the top 10, like top 10% of global uh, podcasts. And David is in the top 5% for his. But we are in the top 10%. You're kidding. We're officially listed on the website, baby. Oh, that's so exciting. Exciting. Oh, I was, I was so excited. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. He's been doing his podcast a whole lot longer than us, so that's sweet. Yeah, he. I had no clue that we would even be listed on there. I saw his no. post on Facebook where he was talking about it, and I just commented. I was like, hey, man, congrats. Like, you fucking deserve it. And then he's like, hey, you and Blue are listed as well. And I'm like, wait, what? Wow. So I go in and look, and I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah, <laughs> Where are the top like- 10%? Holy shit. That's amazing. But yeah, if you like anything nerdy, be sure to go check out Tales from the Fandom. Fantastic podcast that just gets random nerdy people on and he interviews them about three, two, three, four of their favorite different nerdy things. Sometimes it's cosplay or video gamings, video gamings, video games or anime or I don't know, just things that are like nerdy and cool that uh, that um, people love. I went on there personally to talk about Harry Potter. I talked about streaming because I was uh, at the time I was streaming a lot on Twitch. And I actually talked about Prince of Tennis as well, which is one of my favorite animes that we have probably, we've talked about reviewing it on here a few times, but it's 178 episodes for just the main storyline, let alone all the movies and and then the new season and everything else. So I don't know, maybe we'll get to it one of these days, but you know, it's Mm -hmm. a long one. I think I talked to him about Metal Gear, Dragon Ball and something else. I can't, I can't remember. Uh, It's probably streaming if I had to guess. But the dude is fantastic. He is genuinely one of the best interviewers I've ever had the pleasure of meeting. Dude is absolutely phenomenal. And yeah, do be sure to check that out. Yeah. And he's such a, he's such a nice person as well. He's just really, really down to earth, really cool bloke. Mm -hmm. I think that, I think that takes care of everything that I got to say. Takes care of me. Yeehaw. So thank you all so much for listening. Blue and I greatly appreciate it. Next week, Konosuba which is very highly regarded as in like the top five to 10% or top five to 10 isekais of all time. Yeah. Yeah. It is purely nerdy, comical nonsense. It's all nothing but shenanigans and I'm looking forward to covering it. So be sure to check that out next week, but until then we'll catch y'all next time. Bye-bye. Bye.